So what we're going to do is have a look over, essentially, if you want to get the syllabus language for this, and I encourage you, by the way, I'll just show you. Um, this is the syllabus document. It's not, it's not a document for you. You're not the intended audience. However, there's no reason why you can't read it. And actually, I highly encourage all of you, uh, even if you're not going to become experts in this, that's my job, um, at least become aware of it. And it helps you understand, like, what are we learning? What's the sequence? Have I missed anything? It's a really great revision tool. And I should say as well, the mathematics syllabus is I mean, I'm biased, but I think it's one of the most helpful ones in how detailed it is. I know when I work with other teachers and they have a look at our uh, syllabus. So for example, I hope a lot of this rings a bell when you have a look at it. You're like, oh, I forgot the blinds. C2.1, have a look at those dot points, right? In fact, if you look closely, some of them are literally exactly what we've done in class. Like that first one says, establish the formula that the derivative of sine is cos. And the derivative of cos is negative sine by numerical estimations of the limits and informal proofs based on geometric constructions. That's a bit of a mouthful, but it's literally what we did. I gave you guys that graph of sine x. We informally measured geometrically what the gradients were, and we got a sense of what the gradient should be, and therefore what the derivative is. Okay? Um, and you can keep on going all the way through that. We've actually really been covering, you can see that heading there, C. 2.1 and we've also been looking at C 2.2 kind of in parallel, right? So having come to the end of that, that's why this is my last lesson with you guys today, uh, I wanted to kind of tie this up in a neat bow. Uh, you can see I've left off polynomials like x squared, x cubed, etc. Because we covered that last year, we didn't really need to review that. So obviously you know more derivatives than are just on this page. Uh, but I wanted you to have one like, si like single place where you could look, stick this in your book, whatever it is that you want, so that we know all of these things that we've learned over the last three weeks or so. I started with the easy stuff, uh, the stuff that is the uh, kind of earliest that we looked at. We're just going to go through and say, well, what's the derivative for each one? And when we have a look at the chain rule, as we make this more complicated, what does it then look like, right? So, no prizes. I want you all to say this with me on the count of three. The derivative of e to the x is just 3, 2, 1, e to the x. Thank you. So let's just pop that over here in that first box. Now, when I say chain rule, what I'm referring to is the fact that if you do, did not have just an x up in the uh, exponent, in the index, right? If you had something like, if you were asked to differentiate something like e to the f of x. So I gave you a variety of f of x's over the last few weeks. Like I could put an x squared in there. I could put a, um, x on 3. I could put anything in there, right? We sort of got used to the fact that we would take that derivative of that top bit, right? The derivative of f, which I guess in these terms, you would call the derivative of f of x, you would name that f dash. You would find that derivative, and then you would say, okay, well, the rest of it is e to the power of something. And when you differentiate e to the power of something, as we just kind of stated, nothing changes. So you end up with e to the power of whatever something was there before, which I guess we're calling f of x. Does that make sense? So you see, these are really the same rule here on the left and on the right, but this is what happens when you kind of just take it to the next level. There's a function of a function, you use the chain rule, okay? All right, let's see how your memory is. We then extended it fairly recently to say, well, e to the x is the nice, neat looking base, but we actually can handle any exponential you like. Two to the x, three to the x, five to the x. We just need to modify what's going on here, right? So when you differentiate a to the x, you still end up with something that has a to the x in it, but we modify it somehow. Do you remember what's missing? Yeah, go ahead. Right? A to the power of a Okay, so I've got the a to the x here, and then we get uh, lin or log of a, whatever that number happened to be. So if you were differentiating 2 to the x, your derivative would be 2 to the x log 2. That's it, okay? Now, going over here to the right, we're going to do it you know, row by row. If I then had not a to the x, but if I was differentiating a to the f of x, have a think about how it's going to be different and how it's going to be similar. When you have a look at the first and the second row, really the key difference is this log, right? It's just a, off by a different factor, okay? So that log is going to be there again, 
But if you have a look up here, there's also this chain rule stuff happening, right? It's very, very similar. So I can say I'm going to do that derivative of whatever is up the top there. You're not in E, it's some other base, so I'm going to say that's A to the F of X. And then, like you saw over here on the left-hand side, that log A just is the fact that we change by. So it's just going to be trailing along the end there. Okay? And of course, in the case where your base A happens to be E, this will become exactly the same thing you saw up above. F dash X, E to the FX, and then log E, this is base E, so it's just 1. Uh, and it just cancels out. Okay? All right. Can I just pause there? Is this making sense? It's ringing bells, I hope. Okay, I know this was a couple of weeks ago that we did this. Let's move into the logs. This again is a really simple one. When you differentiate base E, uh, maybe we should put that as well. This is log base E of X. They're the um, different notations for the same thing. What do you get as the derivative? The really simple one. one Fantastic, thank you very much. One over X. And then when we extend that into the chain rule. If you've got, if you've been asked to differentiate log of some function, f of x. Again, it bears a lot of resemblance to that thing over on the left. It's still a fraction, so I'll just write that. What's on the top? f dash, and on the denominator, it's f of x. So f dash on f, that's the way I say this because it's just a bit um, quicker to say, but same deal, right? Does this make sense? These are easy results to use. Okay, now this one, you can see I've given you a bit of space because we're going to do a teeny bit of work in here, right? This is actually sneaky. I did kind of smuggle this into the exercise, but I never did this up on the board, so maybe I should do it with you now. In the same way that we went from e to the x to a different base, a to the x. Now I'm doing the same thing, but for logs. Base e is easy. Base A, you've got to think a little bit, okay? So what we're going to do is, as has often been the case, we're just going to make a slight modification to the way we write the original function before we differentiate. This is with a different base, A instead of E. So what log law is going to help me write this in a more helpful form? What do you reckon, Rishi? Uh, change of base law, right? The base is not the one we want, so I'm just going to change it, okay? Now, we know that it's easy to deal with if you've got base E, so therefore, when I've got this uh, fraction is what you get in change of base law, right? Um, have a think about what's going to be on the top and the bottom. Does anyone want to suggest what's going to be for change of base law on the top and the bottom, Ian? Um, you have, like, lin f or log. Log base E x, or you could write that as ln x at the top, and then on the denominator, log base e of a, right? So you can see we've changed the base, it's now e and e, and the way I remember it is that this a and this x, it's the same, like the lower one is lower and the upper one is upper, so that's why the a is down here, the x is up there, okay? Now, even though I could use this just fine, just to make it super obvious, right? I'm going to write this with um, ln notation. The constant part is 1 over this log base e of a, ln of a. That, that part is just a number, right? And then what's on the numerator is ln x. And I already know how to differentiate that. It's just 1 over x. Just I've got a number out the front. It could have been 3 or 4 or 5, but it happens to be 1 over log a. It's an awkward sounding number, but a number nonetheless. So therefore, when I differentiate it, have a look at what we started with up here. What you're going to get down here. Have a think. Any suggestions? I'll give you a clue. There's a 1 over x in there. Because that 1 over x right there, it comes from this log x here. But then there's an extra bit. What's the extra bit that I'm going to need? Yeah, it's this, it's this 1 over ln a, right? So it's really this times 1 over ln a, but because they're both on the denominator, you might as well just kind of squish them together. Uh, I tend to see it written like this, 1 over x log a. I'll just put that over there because I'm slightly irritated by the symmetry of it. So there you go. That's what happens when you've got a different base. Let's see if we can extend it over here to when we have chain rule. If I'm asking you to differentiate something, a log with a different base, log base a of f of x. I wonder if we've got enough information just on the piece of paper for you to be able to follow the pattern and tell me what's going to result. What do you think? 
I'll give you a clue. There's a fraction. I have, I'm, I have great, like, completely useless clues, but that's why I give them to you so easily. Um, what did you start with? If the base was E, you have this, right? And in much the same way if you look up, right? Do you see how much similarity there is with exponentials when the base is E and when the base is not E? Like, things look almost exactly the same. And the same deal is going to happen here. We had F dash on F before, and we're going to get F dash on F again. But by adding this different base, well, what's the difference? Do you see how with exponentials we, uh, we multiplied by log A? Remember how exponentials and logs are the same things, just looked at from different perspectives. So instead of multiplying by log A, what do you think we're going to need to do? We're going to have to divide. Can you see it? We've actually already done this. So therefore, this is going to be a log A, but it's on the denominator. Yeah? Okay, that's actually casting your mind back, so I hope we'll be able to do this next bit a bit more easy because it's quite fresh, right? Derivative of sine, we actually just looked at it in the syllabus. It's just going to give you cos. Fantastic. And if I ask you to differentiate not sine x, but sine of some function of x, are you starting to get sick of this yet? It's the same rule, chain rule, every time, right? You're going to differentiate that part on the inside, the f of x, which gives you f dash. And what happens to the sign when you differentiate it? You just told me, it becomes cos. But don't forget, it's not cos of x, it's cos of whatever that function was. So we will call that f of x. Okay? Derivative of cos, you'll be careful because it's so similar but just slightly different. It's a negative sign. So if I differentiate cos of some function, that f dash is going to come along for the ride. At this point, I could write the minus over here, but if I factorize it nicely, that minus would actually end up out the front, so that's where I'm going to place it. And then you end up with sine of whatever that function was. And then we can round it out. Tan is the weird one. That's because it's really a quotient in disguise, sine over cos. When we did this, we actually proved it. What did you end up with? We had to use a reciprocal. Sec squared, right? Sec squared x. So therefore, final bit of our summary. When you've got tan of some function, f dash again, and the tan turns into sec squared like we already saw. Ta-da! Now, when you have a look at that, right, I think it's really important that you have this summary somewhere that you can get to easily. Um, however, some of you are going to get a little bit cross at me because, in a sense, you didn't need to write this to have access to this summary because can some of you tell me where this summary already exists? This is, let's have a look, this is page three of the reference sheet, right? And you can see on the left hand side, differential calculus, right? You've got the uh, familiar stuff like product rule and quotient rule up there on the top. And then, ta-da, here are actually the results you've just been working on, right there. Do they look familiar? In fact, are they almost exactly how you've written them? I think it's really important, number one, um, that you know where these are, right? The reference sheet is no advantage to you if you spend all your time not knowing where things are, so you're like digging around and it's meant to save you time, but there's a time penalty to using it if you don't know where things are, okay? But secondly, even though I know you have this and you can get given it in every exam, I still think it's vital that you have your own one because <laughs> I used to teach a student who routinely got like in top 10 rankings in every subject that he did. And everyone was like, oh man, Jason is so smart. How can I be as smart as Jason? And Jason made assiduous notes, things like this. And everyone would say, if only I could get Jason's notes, I could be as smart as Jason. And Jason wasn't just smart, he was generous. So he literally gave anyone who asked a copy of his notes. And it's like, wow, isn't that nice? But no one ever did as well in their tests as Jason did. Can anyone tell me why? Because like reading isn't as effective as writing by yourself. Even if you've got access to the notes, even if you've got every single thing there, reading it's one thing, but actually writing it yourself is totally different. An entirely different thing happens in your brain and it will help you actually reinforce this in your mind. So whichever one you want to go for, make sure you've got it accessible. But these results here, it's super important that you work with them. That's how you learn them, not by reading them. Okay?